Just a lick. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Tibet This Week, a weekly feature in English that provides a preview of this week's news on Tibet, His Holiness the Dalai Lama, and the Central Tibetan Administration. Let's have a look at today's headlines. Europe echoes call for international investigation into the case of Tugu Tenzi Delek Rinpoche. Sikyong completes Japan visit. Representative Ngoduk Doji attends the State of Nation Address of South African Parliament. Central Tibetan Administration organizes first Tibetan Women's Empowerment Conference. Information Secretary strengthens political advocacy for Tibet in the United Kingdom. During the second week of his Japan visit, Sikyong Dr. Lobsang Senge paid a visit to Hoganji Temple in Japan's ancient capital, Kyoto, which maintained religious and cultural ties with Tibet since the time of 13th Dalai Lama. While addressing the public on topics, tragedy in Tibet, what's the way forward, and why Tibet matters for Asia, Sikyong said that to understand China, one must understand Tibet and reminded that China is everywhere in Asia and all these happened because people did not pay attention to what happened in Tibet 60 years ago. Sikyong also emphasized that Japanese people's support for issue of Tibet sends a powerful message to all the Buddhist countries in Asia that they stand for justice, nonviolence, and democracy, and that it also sends a message of hope and courage to the Tibetans suffering repression under China's rule. Sikyong also delivered a talk on leadership and resilience in Tokyo. The talk was organized by Human Values Institute based in Japan, which works towards educating people about essential inner values in a non-religious context, primarily through education. Nimal Hamo, niece of Tugu Tenzi Delek Rinpoche, made a Europe advocacy tour calling for an international investigation into the circumstances that led to the death of her uncle in Chinese prison. During the two-week-long advocacy tour to five European countries of Germany, Czech Republic, Sweden, Denmark and Spain, Nimal Hamu met with foreign ministry officials, parliamentarians, international human rights organizations, media and Tibet support group members. German Human Rights Commissioner Dr. Barbel Kofler commended Nimal Hamo's courage and stressed on the importance of having eyewitness accounts of the human rights violations inside Tibet. And Mr. David Sarwenka, the Director of Human Rights and Transition Policy Department, Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Czech Republic, assured Nimal Hamo that he will engage with China on its human rights record, including the deteriorating human rights situation inside Tibet during the forthcoming 34th United Nations Human Rights Council session. Referring to the current situation inside Tibet, Nimal Hamu said the harassment and torture that her family has been subjected to since the imprisonment of Tugu Tenzi Delek Rinpoche is an example of what Tibetans inside Tibet, particularly the families of Tibetan political prisoners, continue to face. On Tuesday this week, Tibetan political leader Si Kyong Dr. Lobsang Senge inaugurated the first Tibetan Women's Empowerment Conference. The three-day Tibetan Women's Empowerment Conference undertaken by Women's Empowerment Desk of the Department of Home witnessed an awe-inspiring attendance of more than 340 participants, including Tibetan nuns, women and men from across the social and political spectrum. Unveiling its premier Women's Empowerment Conference, Sikyong Dr. Lobsang Senge said that organization of conference is a step in the right direction to carry forward the shared vision of His Holiness the Dalai Lama and the Central Tibetan Administration to promote leadership and compassionate qualities of women in social and political development of the Tibetan community. Highlighting the consistent increase in representation of women in Tibetan administrative bodies, Sikyong said that the vision of the conference is aimed beyond gender equality and on furthering women's role in all socio-economic and political activities. As part of its commitment on women's empowerment, the Tibetan political leader also announced that March 12 will henceforth be officially observed as Women's Day. Sikyong said that the observance of Tibetan Women's Day on 12 March will reflect the collective will of the Tibetan leadership and people to accelerate the women's empowerment policy. Kalyun Sunam Tobge Kholatsang of the Department of Home said that the conference aims to rake in intellectual and public discourse on the understanding of the revised women empowerment policy and to garner recommendations on the effective implementation of the clauses of the policy. 
Based on the Women Empowerment Policy, the conference featured four plenary sessions, governance and leadership, mainstreaming gender perspectives into development process, achieving social empowerment of women and tackling sexual and gender-based violence. The conference participants were divided into seven working groups to discuss, debate and have dialogue on women empowerment policy and to solicit suggestions for its effective implementation at various levels, including CTA both at center and settlement level, public institutions that includes monastic communities, civil society organizations, media featuring print, electronic and news media, private sectors also known as citizen sectors, family, citizen, individual level. The representative of Office of Tibet South Africa, Mr. Ngudub Doje, attended the State of Nation Address 2017 as a guest of the Inkata Freedom Party. The State of Nation Address is a presidential address to a joint session of the parliament before the start of the full parliament debate. Representative Ngurub Doje on his visit to Cape Town took the opportunity to meet with the local members of Tibet support group and updated them on the current political situation inside Tibet, peaceful resistance inside Tibet and the role of Tibet support groups in strengthening the Tibetan movement. The Office of Tibet London organized a week-long official visit of Ms. Dadun Shah Ling, Secretary of Department of Information and International Relations, to the United Kingdom. The week-long engagement aimed to strengthen academic discourse, advocacy for and political engagement on the Tibet issue in light of changing international political climate and shifting positions of governments on China. Secretary Dadun spoke at the Borderline Conference on Religion, Nationalism and Identity at the University of Cambridge and on the topic Resolving the Tibet Question, the Strategic Relevance and Importance of Middle Way Approach at the University of Westminster. A meeting with members of all-party parliamentary group for Tibet featured lobbying United Kingdom government officials and members of the United Kingdom Parliament. Besides holding discussions with UK-based Tibet support groups, the visit concluded with an interaction with the members of Tibetan community in Britain on CTA's future priorities and role of diaspora Tibetans in strengthening CTA's 550 vision. That's all for the week. Tibet TV wishes all its viewers a very happy and prosperous Tibetan New Year.